talk about what's happening on Capitol Hill. We're going to move on. Four hundred one k's are through the roof. We're going to move on. People's stock are through the roof. All right. And he doesn't come from Scranton. That's like one of. He lived there for a short period of time before he even knew it. We're going to move on to the next question. And the people of Pennsylvania. Let me move on to my next question, gentlemen. As of tonight, more than 12 million people are out of work. And as of tonight, 8 million more Americans have fallen into poverty, and more families are going hungry every day. Those hit hardest are women and people of color. They see Washington fighting over a relief bill. Mr. President, why haven't you been able to get them the help they need? 30 seconds here. Because Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to approve it. I do. But you're the president. I do, but I still have to get. Unfortunately, that's one of the reasons I think we're going to take over the House because of her. Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to approve anything because she'd love to have some victories. You're the best negotiator of all time, right? So, crazy Nancy, the worst per- they're t- t- she's a terrible person. She's just a terrible person. So, sh- you're having trouble reaching a deal with her. Huh. Maybe you're just a bad negotiator. I mean, here's the thing. People need help. And this is a very, very important time to help people. And that's why I don't understand how you can't get over yourself and get over your party and stop talking about your political affiliation and start treating us like we live in the same country where we all have to fight this problem together. Because let's face it, no matter what you think about COVID-19, oh, it's not a big deal. Trump told us it's not a big deal. No matter what you think about it, um, it, it, it affects you, and it affects all of us, and you affect all of us. So we need you on our team. And I know you've been following Trump for a long time. What I'm telling you is that guy is for himself. He's for the hotel industry. Do you know how screwed the hotel industry is? They're screwed. There's nothing they can do about it. Everyone's afraid of hotels. So um, that's what he's about. I am about making sure our country's okay. On a date called November 3rd, Nancy Pelosi does not want to approve it. We are ready, willing, and able to do something. Don't forget, we've already approved three plans, and it's gone through, including the Democrats, in all fairness. This one she doesn't want. It's near the election because she thinks it helps her politically. I think it hurts her politically. All right, Mr. Vice President, look. The Republican leader in 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 the United States Senate said he can't pass it. He will not be able to pass it. He does not have Republican votes. Why isn't he talking to his Republican friends? Let me follow up with you, Vice President if we made a Biden, deal, because the let me, let me ask Vice it. President Biden a question. You are the leader of the Democratic Party. Why have you not pushed the Democrats to get a deal for the American people? Well, I have, and they have pushed it. Look, they passed this act all the way back in the beginning of the summer. This is like it's not new. It's been out there. This HEROES Act has been sitting there. And look at what's happening. When I was in charge of the Recovery Act with $800 billion, I was able to get $145 billion to local communities that have to balance their budgets and states that have to balance their budgets, so then have to fire fire they have to fire firefighters, teachers, first responders, law enforcement officers, so they could keep their cities and counties running. He will not support that. They have not done a thing for them. And Mitch McConnell said, let them go bankrupt. Let them go bankrupt. Come on. What's the matter the with this? The bill that guys? was passed in the House was a bailout of badly run, high crime, Democrat, all run by Democrats, cities and states. It was a way of getting a lot of money, billions and billions of dollars to these kids. It was also a way of getting a lot of money from our people's pockets to people that come into our country illegally. We were going to take care of everything for them. And what that does, and I'd love to do that, I'd love to help them, but what that does, everybody all over the world will start pouring into our country. We can't do it. This was a way of taking care of them. This was a way of spending on things that had nothing to do with COVID, as per your question. But it was really a big bailout for badly run Democrat cities and states. All right, I want to... If I get elected, I'm not going to... I'm running as a proud Democrat, but I'm going to be an American president. I don't see red states and blue states. What I see is American, United States. And folks, every single state out there finds themselves in trouble. They're going to start laying off, whether they're red or blue, cops, firefighters, first responders, because teachers, because they have to balance their budget. And the founders were smart. They allowed the federal government to deficit spend to compensate for the United States of America. I want to talk about the minimum wage, gentlemen. Mr. Vice President, we are talking a lot about struggling small businesses yes. and business owners these days. 
Do you think this is the right time to ask them to raise the minimum wage? You, of course, support a $15 federal minimum wage. I do, because I think one of the things we're going to have to do is we're going to have to bail them out, too. We should be bailing them out now, those small businesses. You got one in six of them going under. They're not going to be able to make it back. They passed a, pre a, a package that allows us to be able to call PPP. Money is supposed to go to help them do everything from organize how they can deal with their businesses being open safely. D d schools, how they can make classrooms smaller. This is when you find out that I'm not a real Democrat. So when we raise the minimum wage, what happens with that money? Well, a poor person is suddenly going to go to Walmart and buy a blender or a microwave or an oven or some clothes. And they might just go on a trip with oil, um, but more than likely they're going to buy something that's manufactured. And that's why my campaign, this campaign that I'm running, I bought used goods for it. This, this, uh, it, well, except for my computer, I, but I bought my camera used. I bought my tripod used. I bought a lot of used stuff because I was trying to buy used goods because I was trying to reduce consumption. And I know that I'm one of those poor people that the moment I get cash, what's it going to go to? Probably for uh, something from Amazon, something that requires manufacturing and shipping. And um, it, so I'm going to buy something that I wouldn't normally buy. So um, rich people, they have a microwave. Rich people, they have a blender. Rich people, they have cups and plates and stuff like that. Rich, people's ha rich people have refrigerators. Um, rich people have guitars that are made out of um, wood that is, are, is actually less sustainable than poor people uh, sometimes. But sometimes poor people have uh, unsustainable guitars that they buy. Um, but all I'm saying is uh, rich people and poor people buy the same stuff. Sometimes rich people, people buy more of it. Sometimes they're hoard hoarders. But sometimes there are poor people that are hoarders. If you've ever watched the TV shows with the hoarders, they're always just regular people that have like so much crap. So um, they can't help their compulsive buyers. They can't, they can't help themselves. So um, I think I have no problem making sure that people are more taken care of, but um, raising the dollar minimum wage could really hurt the environment as much as I want to do it. Because I'm someone that would could potentially... Uh, go, oh, wow, a $15 job <laughs> just for doing anything? Wow, I would love to get a job doing whatever I want instead of something that's harder. And then everyone else has to, um, like I'm talking about another job that takes more effort where I can get paid about the same amount because right now a, a lot of people are paying $15 an hour in some states like Texas um, because really um, it's all relative. But, uh, even, but still, uh, as far as living wages go, you need $15 an hour in Texas. So um, I understand that, but... I'm concerned about consumption, and that's why I'm for the second currency. How they can hire more teachers, how they can put ventilation systems in. They need the help. The businesses as well as the schools need the help. But this, these guys will not help them. It's not giving them any of the money. We are going to move Should on to they, immigration, one, one thing very quickly, but I want to get your reaction. He said we have to help our small businesses by raising the minimum wage. That's not helping. Uh, I think right. it should be a state option. Alabama is different than New York. New York is different from Vermont. Every state is different. It should be a state you, option. You said very we recently. We have to help. It's very important. We have to help our small businesses. You, you How said, are you helping your small businesses when you're forcing wages? What's going to happen and what's been proven to happen is when you do that, these small businesses fire many of their employees. You said very Not recently true, you would consider way. raising the federal minimum wage to $15 Say an it. hour. You said recently you would consider raising the federal minimum wage to $15 I, an really hour. Like, is that still the case? And I would consider it. In a, to an extent, but in a what I really like, what I re in a second administration, but not to a level that's going to put all these businesses out of business. It should be a state option. Look, Every... I've lived in different places. I know different places. They're all different. Some places, fifteen dollars is not so bad. In other places, fifteen dollars is bad anywhere if you're a provider for a child, and even if there are two providers in the family and they're both making fifteen dollars an hour. I don't think you understand that, um, but. What I do understand is that um, in some circumstances, $15 is going to a teenage kid who um, is going to consume a lot of raw materials with their purchases. It's just, it's just how they are. The chances are they're going to get clothes from a, um, a garment factory 
that's in um, Sri Lanka that and it's going to have shipped over to the United States after our cotton was shipped overseas, um, possibly from Texas, where I'm I'm from and my my family's I, I'm I'm a farmer. We own a farm. We own a cotton farm in Texas. So I I'm a farmer. If you're a farmer, you should definitely want to vote for me because I understand what it's like to be a farmer. Um, my grandpa was a rancher before he was a farmer. Um, my gran my grandpa also grew vegetables in his backyard. I grew up in in the the heart in, in the American heartland as far as farming goes um, in in Bakersfield, California, where uh, the cornerstone of the American agriculture industry is, and also the cornerstone uh, or one of the cornerstones of the American oil industry is. Um, the movie There Will Be Blood is about where I grew up, Oildale, California, and so I'm for farmers. I'm for oil, um, I, um, but I'm also for the future. Places, other states, fifteen dollars. Okay, would be President ruinous. Trump. Thank no, you. Quick no response, Vice President Biden. Two jobs, one job, be below poverty. People are making six, seven, eight bucks an hour. These first responders, we all clap for as they come down the street because they've allowed us to make it. What's happening? They deserve a minimum wage of fifteen dollars. Anything below that puts you below the poverty level. And the, the point I was trying to get to that I missed, you know, when I was like, ah, yeah, I got out of that. When you're doing a debate, you you give little speeches, and then you have to find a way to exit it because you're like, oh no, I'm going to talk for too long. When sometimes you don't actually finish making your point. The point I was trying to make is um, fifteen dollars an hour isn't enough. And so that's where the supplemental income I've talked about comes in. Because if you're making fifteen dollars an hour, you might need. Uh, more need something else, but I want to make sure that if you're making purchases that you're not buying a guitar made of some rare wood that has that that has been just completely uh, decimated. That that there are like we're we're running out of those freaking trees because I understand it. I want that wood too. Trust me. I I know the smell of that freaking wood. I've owned a lot of fancy guitars. I used to buy and sell guitars on eBay. I am I I love the smell of fancy wood. But all I'm saying is uh, we need to make sure people aren't destroying the planet and that's why tr you, transferring used goods is better than buying something that requires raw materials and so that's why yeah you're making 15 dollars an hour it's not enough well let's make sure there's a way that people have enough to survive there is no evidence that when you raise the minimum wage businesses go out of business that is simply not true we're going to talk it's about immigration soul. we're going to talk about immigration now gentlemen and we're going to talk about families within this context mr president your administration separated children from their parents at the border at least 4000 kids you've since reversed your zero tolerance policy but the united states can't locate the parents of more than 500 children so how will these families ever be reunited Children are brought here by coyotes and lots of bad people, cartels, and they're brought here and they used to use them to get into our country. We now have as strong a border as we've ever had. We're over 400 miles of brand new wall. You see the numbers and we let people in, but they have to come in legally and they come in through. But Maryland. how will you reunite these kids you, with their families, let me just tell you, Mr. President? They built cages. You know, they used to say, I built the cages. And then they had a picture in a certain newspaper and it was a picture of these horrible cages and they said look at these cages president trump built them and then it was determined they were built in 2014 that was him do you they have built we shouldn't separate parents from their children and there should be a place where we put people that are with their children and there should be a place that we should put people that aren't with their children and then there's a place that we should put people that are just children because sometimes children do get sent over on their own sometimes people just want their child to have a life so they're like just push you across the border that doesn't happen very much but i'm just saying at sometimes in history it was happening especially um, because of the wars that have gone on in central america and uh i i think it's a very complicated issue most people don't understand. I guess I could explain it. So basically, Central America is where, on the ground, drugs are transferred both south and north. So um, there's Colombia right there, there's Peru, two major, major um, places that um, cocaine comes from. And you can think that cocaine's not a serious drug. Cocaine is a very serious drug. At one point, Pablo Escobar was the richest man in the, in the world, and he was just very, very bad at laundering his money. And that's why he got screwed. So, um, 
cocaine goes up through Central America, cocaine goes down, which causes a lot of violence to happen. But more than anything, it's just the level of, of street violence that happens because um, apparently the price of drugs is, is more high than I realized, but I, I'm pretty sure it's also the, the level of addiction that happens when you have that many drugs. Because cocaine goes up, but what goes down? Well, methamphetamines, um, LSD, ecstasy, um, like, I don't know, DMT goes up, obviously, because... Like, um, there's, there's, there's that plant that's, that's grown over there. All right. So, and also, but also sometimes drugs can get transferred through Venezuela, but Venezuela has a ocean border and ocean can be difficult for transportation. So a lot of the time people want to run drugs by the ground. And so Central America is where there's, there's a massive drug war and we can intervene. Like I can go talk to people. I can go talk to these gangbangers. I'm not afraid of talking to gangbangers. I'm not afraid of like figuring out how to, um, make, make sure that like, um, kids aren't forced to be in your gang. Like you want to be and have a gang, dude, that's fine. They can't be forced. Like you, they, it has to be a willing decision and, um, and you, you at least have some sort of decency. But the problem is, um, some of these gang wars get pretty serious and we have nothing to do with them, but, uh, we can get more involved than we've been in the past. But a lot of that has to do with going and talking to some of these people in Mexico. Um, like, cause, um, there are, cartels that have relationships with people in Central America and they can chill them out more than I can. So, um, dealing with these problems is complicated. Um, and, 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 and trying to bring peace to Central America is complicated, but I'm for trying to bring peace to Central America. I'm also for making sure that people don't feel like they can just come to the United States illegally and like, you're good. Like, I mean, he's right. Like, you can't just say, okay, well, I'm going to give you free everything now. Like you're, you're going to be completely safe from COVID-19. You made it. Like, I mean, I don't want them to think that, but then I, I also want them to think that if you have COVID-19, you should deal with it and we can help you deal with it because you ha we need you to deal with it. Everyone needs to deal with it, but then I don't want them to be deported. So we have to make sure they're not getting deported, but um, we can't tell people that they can just come here. Reunite just, the kids? Yes, we're families? working on it very, we're, we're trying very hard, but a lot of these kids come out without the parents. They come over through cartels and through coyotes and through gangs. Vice President Biden, let me bring you into this conversation. Quick response and then another question to you. These 500 plus kids came with parents. They separated them at the border to make it a disincentive to come to begin with. Bay, real tough. We're really strong. And guess what? They cannot, it's not coyotes didn't bring them over. Their parents were with them. They got separated from their parents. And it makes us a laughing stock and violates every notion of who we are as a nation. Let me ask you a follow-up question. Kristen, they did it. We changed the policy. Your response they to did that? It. We, we changed. did not They built the cages. The they, who, who built the cages, let's, Joe? Let's talk about what who we're talking about. Who built the cages, about. Let's Joe? talk about what we're talking about. What happened? Parents were ripped. Their kids were ripped from their arms and separated. And now they cannot find over 500 of sets of those parents, and those kids are alone. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. It's criminal. It's criminal. Those are some pretty bad parents. And I know that we all want to act like those aren't bad parents, but those are bad parents. And if your kid is in lockup, you should probably go get your kid. But who knows what happened to their parents? Probably they're drunk in a hole somewhere or dead in the desert because let's face it, it's getting pretty hard to, tough to cross our borders with um, that much wall. And those walls are very difficult to penetrate. And, um, I am for border security. I'm for invisible borders, though. I'm for cameras and stuff like that. I'm for making sure you're caught and that you get deported. And when you get deported, you don't get deported to your coyote. You get deported far away. But um, I'm also for making sure that we uh, appreciate um, that it's not a lot of people's fault that their family came here illegally. And I think that we should embrace them and allow them to carry out the American dream like we have, obviously. I mean, I, I'm, I, I am living the American dream. I see rich people all the time with houses that don't look like mine. Let me ask Kristen, you about I will say this. They Ten went down. We brought reporters, everything. They are so well taken care of. They're in facilities that were so clean. But some of have them haven't been reunited good. with But just families. ask one question. Who built the cages? I'd love you to ask him that. Who built the cages? Let Joe? me ask about your immigration policy, Mr. Vice President. The Obama administration did fail to deliver immigration reform, which had been a key promise.
during the administration. It also presided over record deportations as well as family detentions at the border before changing course. So why should voters trust you with an immigration overhaul now? Because it made a mistake. It, made too, it took too long to get it right. It took too long to get it right. I'll be president of the United States, not vice president of the United States. And the fact is, I've made it very clear. Within 100 days, I'm going to send to the United States Congress a pathway to citizenship for over 11 million undocumented people. And all of those so-called dreamers, those DACA kids, they're going to be immediately certified again to be able to stay in this country and put on a path to citizenship. The idea that they are being sent home by this guy and they want to do that is they go into a country they've never seen before. I can imagine you're five years old, your parents are taking you across the, the Rio Grande River and it's, and, it's, and it's illegal. And you say, oh no, mom, leave me here. I'm not going to go with you. They've been here. Many of them are model citizens. Over 20,000 of them are first responders out there taking care of people during this crisis. We owe them. We owe them. President Kristen, Trump, he had reaction. eight years to do what he said he was going to do. And I've changed without having a specific. Immigration reform is difficult. I think that small immigration reform is going to be the goal of my administration because no one can get a bill through because they try to do too much because they're saying, well, I won't do. I get, I get, apparently the politicians are telling one another they won't do a bill unless they do a massive bill. And I'm for small changes where we can get them. And so I am for immigration reform. Um, I'm not 100% sure what that means because honestly, it's not my expertise. Uh, my plan is to hire my friend Larry. Larry's like the nicest guy in the world. He's a lawyer. I'm pretty sure he's from Arizona. He went to Baylor with me. I trust his opinion. I know he has the interest of the illegal immigrants in, in, in mind. I know he cares about these people and I know he'll tell me the truth. And when something seems really wrong and seems really unfair or seems just unreasonable, I'm going to step in and change the law. And I don't know if it's going to be huge changes like people have tried for in the past and failed with, um, or if it's going to be small changes, which don't exist at all on their side. But, um, I'm going to try to make as many changes as I can in a way that is reasonable because we do need uh, laborers from other countries to come and work in, on our farms. And we do need skilled laborers, especially. I mean, Carlos Gestin, this guy that wrote this machine learning program, who's from um, Brazil, he wrote this program called Graph Lab Create, which is like, it's like very easy to use if you understand uh, data frames. Uh, so it's like, it's hard to explain like how awesome this guy's program is. Well, he's from Brazil. He lives in the United States. He's a multimillionaire because he sold his program to AOL. It's like, well, darn, I have to let this guy come into my country. That stinks. Uh, that's the kind of person that we want to come here, but we also need people that are willing to do hard work. And I think we should appreciate those people and we should allow those people to come here. And that's why um, I am for immigration reform. I'm, I'm just not 100% sure about how I'm going to do it until... I've really gotten into the weeds with it, but I will try. We got rid of catch and release. We got rid of a lot of horrible things that they put in and that they lived with. But he had eight years he was vice president. He did nothing except build cages to keep children in. Vice President Wrong. Biden, your response. The catch and release, you know what he's talking about there? If in fact you had a family came across and they were arrested, they, in fact, were given a date to show up for their hearing. They were released. And guess what? They showed up for a hearing. And this is the first president in the history of the United States of America that's anybody seeking asylum has to do it in another country. That's never happened before in America. That's never happened before in America. You come to the United States and you make your case. Never before in history have we ever had so many people trying to come to the United States. Never in history have we had so many people on planet Earth. Never before has gas been so cheap. Never before have that many people tried to immigrate to the United States. And so um, I think we need to recognize that. And um, we, 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 we can't just let everyone in. You make your case that I seek asylum based on the following, on the following premise, why I deserve it under American law. They're sitting in squalor. What I was trying to say is that uh, people will lie, and if there's anything that a person knows that's from the intelligence community is how good people are lying, there's nothing that will uh, show you how good 
people are at lying like being a spy. And so I'm not a spy, but I'm an intelligence person. So um, once you're a real intelligence person, then you're like, wow, people are good at lying. So yeah, you can claim asylum. Mm. Yeah, you, you actually do need to provide some sort of evidence. Um, I mean, I, I you can't just, oh, I'm in danger. Why? Oh, the gangs. I'm in danger of starving. Well, Mexico's pretty nice. They're sitting in squalor on the other side of the river. President Trump, uh, your response, so 30 important. seconds, and then we'll move It on. just shows that he has no understanding of immigration or the laws. Catch and release is a disaster. A murderer would come in. A rapist would come in. A very bad person would come in. We would take their name. We have to release them into our country. And then you say they come back. Less than 1% of the people come back. We have to send ICE out and Border Patrol out to find them. We would say, come back in two years, three years. We're going to give you a court case. You need Perry Mason. We're going to give you a court case. I met a guy who worked with the FBI who told me he caught some Pakistani terrorists crossing the border illegally. And so... Um, I am for making sure that every single person that comes across the border illegally is someone that we know came across the border illegally. And so, um, theoretically, I guess we could, like, my people could smuggle someone across the border illegally, and I'd be okay with that. But generally, um, I'm for making sure that no one comes across the border illegally at all. And so, like, in a sense, I almost would want to go throw um, traps out there. I don't want to blow up people. I don't want to put landmines out there, because if you put landmines out there, you got to deal with them.